What's going on, guys? Como están? Welcome back to the Engine Room. Today, once again, we have yet another preview for the World Cup. Today, we have Poland and we have Ian Polsinski. He gave me a lesson on how to pronounce his name properly. Probably, he's going to give us a lesson on every single last name of the Poland national team because there's plenty <laughs> of names that I know people are mispronouncing. So, how are you, Ian? Como estas? Welcome to the Engine Room. Doing very well. Thank you for having me. And Diego, once again, always, Diego Montalban here to give us World Cup content. ¿Cómo estás, amigo? What's going on, mi gente? You know how it is, man. We, we are here to break down another team right before the World Cup. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So, first off, Ian, got to say congratulations to Poland for making it to the World Cup. Their eighth World Cup appearance, if I'm correct? No, this yeah, is going to be their yes. ninth. Their ninth. Yes. What's different yeah, about this time? In terms of compared to 2018, um, look, not much, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I, th I still think we have doubts. In 2018, we entered the World Cup with more confidence. We were a pot one team. Uh, I think we were fifth in the world at one stage, and we were on an unbeaten run for like 20 games or something like that. So confidence compared from 20, going into 2018 to 2022, 2018 was much more confident. This one is a bit not too sure how you're going because you've got a new coach, Czesław Michniewicz, and honestly, in terms of tactics and formations, we just don't know what Poland we're going to get. Are we going to get a Poland that played well in the playoff against Sweden, that hung on against Wales to defeat them in Cardiff 1-0? Or are we going to get a Poland that looked really lethargic and bad against Netherlands and conceded six goals against Belgium? So there's just so many questions going into this tournament that we didn't have compared to 2018. Um, but look, we'll see how we go in 2022. Um, look, I'm a little bit confident, but also at the same time, Still so many questions to be asked about players and formations and that. Mm -hmm. So based on that, certainly, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. When, when we were doing predictions for the 2018 World Cup, I, I expected Poland to go through. I thought you had, if I'm, if, tell me if I'm wrong, but you had Colombia, Japan, and Senegal in your group, right? Yes, we and did, yep. I, I thought that group was, was tight. It was difficult. I think all of those teams put out a challenge. But I, I would expect Poland with that unbeaten run that you mentioned to go into the tournament, being the team to go out uh, to Colombia, next to Colombia. Um, but this time around, you have an, you could say, equal or even more difficult group in Argentina and Mexico, also with Saudi Arabia. What's your take on that? Do you think it's a harder group? It's, what, what's different between these two groups that, that you're seeing now? I guess that the position that we're not a pot one team certainly helps um, because heading into Russia, we were pot one team. So it went Poland, then Senegal, Colombia, and Japan. Um, this time we're in pot three where I think we are rightly allocated. So we don't have that confidence or we don't have that mentality of thinking we're going to go into get every game as a favorite sort of thing. Um, in terms of the difficulty of the group, I do think that 2018 was more of a challenging group in terms of we don't know what we're coming up against. Um, whereas in group C, we know more about Argentina. We know more about Mexico. We can analyze them more. And Saudi Arabia is still a bit obscure. We don't really know too much about them. But I just feel like in terms of difficulty, um, I think 2022 looks better slightly because, as I said, mm. it's just 2018 just looked really weird. You had a, a team from Africa, a team from Asia, a team from South America, and a team from Europe. So it was just mm. really weird in terms of playing styles. They don't have a really history with each other. I think it was the first time Poland played against Senegal in, in its confederation history. Um, so that was pretty weird. And I'm heading into 2022, I, I think it's a tough one. Uh, look, we'll analyze it later, but I, I think it's a tough one to, uh, to predict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the chances of making out of this group? <sighs> it's a really tough one. Look, I think that Poland can make it out, but I don't think Poland makes it out because we, we're good. I think we make it out because Mexico are bad. That's just how I see it. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see that Poland. Poland maybe get a result against Mexico, win or draw there in the in the opening game. Then we win hopefully against Saudi Arabia, um, and then Argentina. I think we'll lose that one. But I I discuss it with my dad almost every day. I think we make that we make it out of the group based on how poor Mexico are, not how good Poland are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what what just to give us a little more perspective, I, I would say on on for the viewers for the audience listening, what 
what do you think was the expectation of Poland going to into that World Cup into 2018? Because I do want to make that comparison because I, I've I've listened to to some I've read some articles, listened to a podcast or two where they mentioned that that yeah, for Poland it was a big disappointment that World Cup that they were expecting more. So oh. what what is your take your your take on that? How how does that translate now when you bring it into into Qatar? Yeah, so, certainly, so that was a um, very big disappointment because in 2018 we had the Euros and we made the quarterfinals. Um, and then what is it? We had a quarterfinal run. We we lost to Portugal on penalties. And even though we lost, we got eliminated. We were still really happy that we made it that far. I don't think we've had a run that unique before. And what is it? Heading into 2018, as I said, we were pot one team. We were unbeaten in 22 games. We had a really good qualifying campaign. And as soon, you know, I keep saying it to my dad as well that the best part of the World Cup was actually just the anthems. <laughs> that was really it, really. Um, as soon as that, as soon as the anthems were played, and then as soon as that final whistle went, it was just shocking. And look, I went to all three games in Russia. I went to Moscow, I went to Kazan, and I went to Volgograd for all three games. And up to this day, it's still a daily conversation at the dinner table. You know, talking about those games and what could have been, what should have been, but it wasn't wasn't to be. And I hope that we use that as motivation from a Poland perspective. I really hope that because we have a history of not doing well, and I really hope that. Yeah, because you, you guys, when when doing a little bit of our research for Poland, you did manage to reach third, I think, twice, two times, a long time yes, ago. Yeah, yeah, yep, when, yep, 74 yeah, seventy-four and eighty-two. Exactly, and and it's been kind of like a struggle to be able to to get back to the to the those days, let's say, to those reminiscent days of the of the past. So, what mm. do you think is a little bit different now, moving a little bit more tactically in terms of the style of play or what what Poland will do? Are they going to be a little bit more pragmatic in this World Cup? Uh, you say mm. that they're not thinking they're going to be as favorites, maybe hope on the spark of, of Lewandowski, or what is your take? What are you looking forward in this game in, ter in terms of the actual football? So in terms of the actual football, in terms of tactics, I don't really know. We have a new manager called Czesław Wiknievich, and he's been at the helm for a long time. Oh, not for a long time, sorry, for just a few months now. And what is it? We just don't know what Poland we're going to get. I'm being honest. We just don't know. Will he play three at the back? Will he play four at the back? Will he play five at the back? Will he have two strikers? Will he have one? Um, so I'm not too sure there. Like what in terms of tactics, it's just so obscure and you just it's unknown at this stage. It really is. Mm. You know, 2018 to 22. Um, what players would you say are missing from that 20 20 plus unbeaten run? And 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 you know, how could they have helped? So I don't think that this is just goes down to one player or a bit of a group. I think it just goes into club form. And I think this, this exciting run that Poland football was just going through, like we had Lewandowski coming up, Kamil Glick was playing for Monaco at the time, and Monaco mm -hmm. were a good team. So yes. there, I can't pinpoint a single individual. One player that I thought did a really good um, Euro 2016 campaign uh, and heading into the World Cup was Michal Pazdan. So he was a centre-back um, at the time. He played mm -hmm. for Legia Warsaw, and he was really good, like a brick wall. But apart from that, no, no individual like we're missing out or anything like that. It was just more of a club form. Everyone was excited. Everyone in Poland was really excited for for Poland. And um, look, heading into twenty twenty two, there's not really. It's a bit of the same squad. You got Lewandowski up top. We got uh, Szczesny as goalkeeper. Kamil Glick in the back. Uh, Krakowiak center mid. Pardon me. We got Piotr Zielinski as well center attacking mid. So look, um, there's not really an individual out there. I would say anything. It's just more like club form or just excitement, really. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you, you think that it, there's not as much excitement going into this World Cup as there was in 2018? Yes, yeah, certainly. No, no. 20, heading into 2018, there was more excitement, more, you know, um, like, oh, we're going to take on the world. That type, that type of mentality where we're going to be like, oh, group stage. I mean, a few Polish commentators said, group stage done. We're going to the next stage after this. What an easy group this was. I always said personally that it was a hard group. But anyway, that was the mentality in Poland the excitement heading into this one it's more just unknown uncertainty a lot of people mm. think we might go out a lot of people think we won't go out because with poland's just the history of recent tournaments we just can't get out of the group stage which which is a shame because you know 2016 2018 and 2020 and 2022 we've qualified for major tournaments be it europe or world cup but we just haven't been able to get out of the group uh bar one so yeah it was a challenging um i wouldn't say challenging but it's just disappointing to get those results leading up to the group stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, of course, could you could you talk us about uh, walk us over a little bit of of what it means to have for for me? I'm gonna be honest, like the best striker in the world, and and how can that 
how does that influence your team or how does it how is it different for a nation that you look towards one player and perhaps not just collectively like like the solid union right and also maybe mention us a little bit about what Zielinski is doing right now in Napoli I think Napoli are right now currently one of the best informed teams in the, in Europe so how how can that combination provide you guys what you would need to go out of the group stage So in terms of Robert Lewandowski's presence in the national team, and I, I heard this from ESPN and I, I really agree with this, I think Robert Lewandowski creates unrealistic expectations for Poland. And I, I really mean that. I think because of how good Lewandowski is, everyone thinks Poland must be on that level where we simply just, mm -hmm. we don't have a team of Lewandowski's or the technical ability of Lewandowski's. So what he brings to Poland is, is just, I feel like it's just a ranking system where he goes Lewandowski, daylight in terms of technical ability and then some other players. Obviously, you've got Zielinski, who's in, he's on fire at the moment for Napoli. But Lewandowski just, as I said earlier, creates unrealistic expectations for Poland mm -hmm. because of how good he is. Everyone just thinks, oh, Poland, go out um, to the next stage or whatever. But look, it's, as I said, we just don't have technical ability players of his capability to control games and that. And in terms of Piotr Zielinski, he's on fire. <clears throat> I really rate him heading into the World Cup. He had, a, he had a very disappointing 2018 World Cup and 2020 Euros really didn't do too much as well. So I think he's heading into the World Cup with the correct form. Uh, he's playing well for his club uh, in the league and in the Champions League. And I think, yeah, I, I see Piotr Zielinski having a big World Cup. <clears throat> If you had to to be the coach, right? Uh, Zesla Michniewicz, is that, is that how you pronounce it? I'll just say it now. It's uh, Czesław Michniewicz, if you want to say ah, it like that. Mich Czesław Michniewicz. Got it, got it. No, I want to know. I want to know. I want to pronounce it right. Um, what would be your ideal 11? In terms of formation, sorry, or players? Uh, let's go with players. What players, what, what would be your ideal 11 for, the, for this Poland squad, you know, against their first game in, against Mexico, for, for example? It's a hard one. It's a hard one. <clears throat> I personally would prefer to see four at the back because Czesław Kinevich is having this, he's having this love affair for uh, um, three at the back, which no one can stand. I'm being serious. No one can stand <laughs> this three at the back. It's a three, five, two. And if you have technical players that are good midfielders, sure, play five midfielders, but Poland is just not that good technically. So I prefer rather play like a 4-2, like a, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think 4-3-3 three, three or something like that. I'm, I'm not too sure. I've got a bit of a mind blank. But in terms of the players what I like to, who I like to see, so I've got Szczesny in goals. I've got, um, so, so I've got Glick, Bednarek. So Glick plays in uh, Benevento, Bednarek for Southampton. Uh, mm -hmm. And then right back, I've got Matty Cash. Left side, I've got uh, Nikola Zalewski, who plays in, for Roma. And then two midfielders, it's a bit challenging because we don't know. A lot of people don't really like Krakowiak in the team. Someone, a lot of them want him to retire. A lot of, him, a lot of commentators just want him to go from the national team. Um, but then we've also got Christian Bielik as well. Christian mm -hmm. Bielik is a midfielder who plays for Birmingham, and he's really good. 24 years old, uh, plays for Birmingham. Uh, what else has he's got? He's just came back from an injury, so it's good to see that. I think he starts against Mexico. And then on the left and right side, I'm not too sure at this stage, on the left and right wing, but I'd rather start off with two strikers. Mm. Yeah, I want to see us play with two strikers. Lewandowski, of course, but I don't know who the other one's going to be. I'm thinking maybe Akadzius Milik to start and then Karol Świderski to uh, come off the bench. Karol Świderski plays for Charlotte in the MLS. Maybe you guys know him, um, mm -hmm. but he's been really good. The, there's a big question about who should, be, who should partner up with Lewandowski or should we go with one, one striker or two strikers? For me, I'd rather go with two strikers Um, and I'd rather start with Milik, start, and then use Fideski as a substitute. Because for me, Lewandowski and, Shred uh, Lewandowski and Milik are identical. They both have an eye for goal, and Milik doesn't really drop into that center mid or to help out Lewandowski, whereas Fideski is really good at attracting defenders, or he's really good at, at like a partnership with Lewandowski, Fideski. So I think, look, I, I start with two strikers, Milik and Lewandowski, and yeah, that's all I can offer. Would it be outrageous to have... Lewandowski be the one dropping a little bit deeper more because that's I, I, for instance I'm a Barcelona fan right and I'm I'm seeing that from Lewandowski mm -hmm. in the 4-3-3 three, three with Xavi he does make those 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 midfielders like work a little bit more dropping in deep and creating space I know it's just it's something different something different that I've never seen Lewandowski do before and and maybe he'll be like you know what last day last match of <laughs> the group wrong. stage I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run the I'm gonna run the midfield I'm gonna create the chances for everybody I'll tell you one thing. So this is the first time that you see Lewandowski in the midfielder, but this is, this is what happens every time when Poland plays an elite team from Europe. 
<laughs> like honestly, I, I just feel like Lewandowski <laughs> just carrying uh, Poland because, and yeah. I keep re- I keep repeating this: we just our midfielders don't have the technical ability to match it. We just we just don't compared to the likes of you know, our nation league's opponents, uh, Belgium and Netherlands. We just didn't have the technical ability to to play against them, and we don't have the midfielders. So Lewandowski has to drop into the midfield to help out. But then what happens? We got no attack. So unfortunately, mm. yeah, unfortunately, it's two sides of one coin, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you're asking too much from him, obviously, and then you lose something in the attack. I get it. Is there is there any player that you that you could say? Look, group uh, group C, you guys need to look out for. Apart from obvious the obvious Lewandowski, right? Like, there's you know one player in your mind that you could think you guys got to look out for him. That's a tough one. I'm trying to think in terms. I'll give one. You obviously got mm-hmm. Piotr Zielin- you've got Piotr Zielinski, but I think people know him because of Napoli. But one other yeah. player I think is really good is Nikola Zaleski, who plays mm-hmm. for Roma, Roma. on left, left wing back, left mid. Really good at going up forward. Probably defending not too well. He needs to understand that in a 3-5-2, you need to drop a lot more as that, as that yeah. wing back. But in terms of going forward, Nikola Zaleski is really good. I think at the back, he won the uh, conference league with Roma last season. Um, so uh, what is Nikola Zaleski is definitely one player to keep an eye on. And I would do one more player in the central midfielder is Christian Bielik. This guy, as I said earlier, from Birmingham City, second division, just came back from injury. Really good at winning the ball in tight areas. Really good midfielder. Wins the ball, does a lot of kilometers. Uh, fairly young as well. So I think that he's definitely one player to watch out, Christian Bielik in that midfielder, if he does play. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he was playing at, Ar- he, well, he was part of the Arsenal Youth Academy, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah, unfortunately for him, him. Um, unfortunately for him, he's just got a long uh, a history of long term injuries, which is a shame because mm. he's a really good uh, midfielder to have. And if he does get called up, which I think he will, um, he can be definitely one player to watch heading into this World Cup for Poland. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Buga, you got any closing statements or anything left to say to ask? Mm, not not really, man. But okay. but I put my my betting on on Poland, so so you better go through than Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just. Listen. I I have this conversation with my with my uh, dad almost every day. It's just about Mexico because we're just not too sure. My dad mm-hmm. keeps saying, you know, I keep I keep telling my dad, you know, we can do it. Mexico look poor. This is our time to pounce on that. But then my dad says, look, doesn't matter. Mexico make it out of their group. They're a team that turns up at the group stage. Um, so I'm really nervous about heading into yeah. the first game against Mexico against Saudi Arabia. I think we'll win, and then Argentina. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But look, as I said. From my closing statement, I think Poland makes it out of the group, not because Poland are good, but because of Mexico being poor. Yeah, Me- like Mexico that. have been poor. I can tell you that. I, I think <laughs> up to their standards or whatever, they they haven't been great. They haven't been great. And you know, from what we're hearing before the World Cup is that, uh, you know, they're not going to take, uh, they're not going to take, for example, Chicharito, who's who's one of the top scorers right now. Mexican top scorers, Raul Jimenez injured, coming back from injury. Like, there's a lot of what ifs. Uh, to me, I I'm with Buga. I actually think that Poland can make it out of this this group. And if I must be honest, I think that it's not on. I'm more sure of Poland beating Mexico, but I'm more worried about Saudi Arabia because of the the unknowns, right? There's a lot of unknowns. I, I've I've seen a little bit of their games, and I've seen that they 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 pressure you. You know, they they don't stop bugging you, and they're very fast. So yeah, yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. I can even add my two cents on Saudi Arabia because yeah, I, li- I live in Australia, and they're in the Asian Federation. I can tell you one thing: that Saudi Arabia will be disciplined heading into this World Cup. It won't be mm-hmm. a disaster like they had uh, in Russia, in my opinion. I think they got a really good defense, a uh, really good coach as well from France, Herve Renner. And I think yeah. that they'll they'll surprise. I don't think they make it out of the group, in my opinion. I don't think they will, mm. um, because they've got their own problems, like scoring goals. They can't score. Yeah. But I think mm-hmm. I think that they're a very disciplined team, and Herv Renault knows what to get from his um, Saudi Arabian players. So it should be a very. It's a really interesting group when you think about it, because I think Argentina, everyone puts it down as clear favorite, nine right. points. Mm-hmm. But in terms of that battle for second position, it's up for grabs, and I think it's mm. a really, a really unique group. I mean, some groups of the World Cup are top two you re- you can already identify and in this one it's just you don't know who's going to get that second spot mm. um so it's very interesting and i look forward to it and i'll be there in qatar i'm going out uh-huh. with my, uh, my dad nice. so um what is it 
look, we're going to be swarmed by the Mexicans, by the Saudis and the Argentinians. <laughs> there won't be many of us. But look, um, I'll just yell out that anthem as loud as I can. Hopefully spur on the boys um, when they play. And look, I I just want to see a Lewandowski World Cup goal. You know, how can you... There you <laughs> go. One yeah. One the best, one of the best players in the world, one of the best strikers. And you look at his resume, no goals in a World Cup. So I hope that changes at 2022. And yeah, really... Really nervous about this one. I because just to sorry add on to this, it's Lewandowski's last one. It's Chesney's last one. Mm-hmm. Flick's last one. Uh, Krakowiak's last one. This is going to be um, the last chance that Poland. This is our. I wouldn't say golden generation, but this is our last generation, really, <laughs> uh, because it will be really hard to produce a player of technical ability like um, like Lewandowski's shooting ability yeah. or even Chesney's goalkeeping brilliance and Glick's, um, you know, defending. He just like he will die, he'll go to an army for defending like that. So, um, look, heading into it, I am nervous. But with Poland, it's just I want to get out of the group. A lot of countries like France, Argentina, Brazil, they want to be in the final. They want to win the whole thing. For Poland, my expectation out the expectation of the country is just to get out of the group. That's all we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all we look, want. Two things. Two things. First, I'm going to, if, if Lewandowski scores, I'm going to scream it as loud as possible. Also, he's my, literally, he's my phone wallpaper. <laughs> and, yeah. and second thing, I, I think you can, I, I mean, we haven't talked about Argentina at all, but quickly, I just want to say, like, Argentina coming into this tournament, they do have a different perspective because they do have that pressure of being the favorite. I think this is the very first time since ever, since Messi played in 2006, that they are favorites for a competition i think that is and, and trust me me and diego know the argentina media they are they are constantly they're on ruthless. their shoulders they're ruthless. ruthless and i think that i don't know i mean could you play on their nerves maybe that's just what might take like because because when when i look at that game i never do put argentina like a team that's gonna better you like three nil and bang you're out of the, of the game I, I do think that there's always gonna be a screw up somewhere or maybe because that pressure is just too much yeah, but I also think I also think that since Argentina won the Copa America, it's like a, a chip has been lifted off their shoulders, right? Mm, they finally maybe. won a tournament, and and F- Messi finally got a title with Argentina, and and so I feel like now they're playing a little more freely, a little more loose, and there's there's a togetherness from that team that there wasn't in 2018 and 2000, um, 2014, 2010. Like it just I don't know. It seems a lot different. Uh, yeah, but that's just my take. I still, obviously, in 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 a short tournament like like the World Cup, anything can happen. And like you said, the media in Argentina, they're ruthless. They they can belittle them for no reason. Mm-hmm. But but uh, I mean, Argentina, they just have a lot of star power. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I've just got a question to you guys. Sorry, do you think do you see Poland advancing to the next stage from this group? I do. Uh, I, I do. have them as second. To be honest, with yeah, you. me too. I have them seconds. Is it, and just from my perspective, because I live in Australia, we don't really have that Mexican uh, presence here in terms of like the media or the football. So can you just tell me just quickly, how's Mexico looking heading up? Is, are they, do they look shaky? Because I know they've got injuries and they've they got look a shaky. lack of confidence, but um, can you just give me some offer, offer me some assistance into Mexico? Yeah. For, for Mexico, I think they look shaky uh, on top of the fact that there's like no confidence in their coach uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> on top of the fact that, they have a lot of injuries in Raul Jimenez, um, Tecatito. Um, they're not taking Chicharito. So it's – it's. I just don't know where the goals are coming from. Aside from, you know, Chucky Lozano, who is also at Napoli and has been doing all right, it may be tough, right? It may be tough. I just don't see – they have an aging squad as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that you got to play up. Make them run. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so look, as I said earlier in my closing statement, I'd just say quickly that I think Poland gets out of the group. Um, we use the 2018 uh, World Cup as motivation heading into 2022, like the failures from 2018 in, in Russia. Uh, we use that to spur it on, and I think Poland make it out, as I say, because of how poor Mexico are, not because of how Poland are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go, guys. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Another one in the engine room. We got 31 more to go. So I'll see you guys soon. This is Poland for the engine room. See you guys soon.